Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we're here tonight with a great son of Delta, and his name is Dr. Ebeba Rufus Eseogene. I think he will be better, he will be in the positive uh, position to tell us who he is. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm How are you Dr. doing? Rufus Ebeba. Okay. I'm the director general of the National Biosafety Management Agency. Okay. Uh, so um, you are here tonight. Uh, we're here tonight to talk to you about um, the activities of policies and politics in Nigeria. And basically, we are going to be narrowing everything down to your personality, your person. So uh, we we'll, we we'll like to know you apart from your name. Where are you from? Your personal information, your personal details as a Delta child. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just saying I'm Dr. Rufus Ibeba. I hail from Delta State, Ugali North precisely. I'm an indigenous of uh, Erini. Uh, I was born in the year 1963. And, uh, I hold, I, in my childhood days, let me start with my childhood days. I try to live with my auntie. We started living with her in those states, especially in the town known as Okutukupa, and that's where I started my primary school. And I later moved to, I later moved to Benin City, where I completed my primary school, and I went to secondary school, known as Agbarugama School, St. Enders College, in Agbarugama Delta State. When I graduated, when I left the secondary school, I went to the University of Benin where I studied agriculture. After my graduation, I did my youth service in Kano, in a town known as Pura as a farm supervisor. From there, I got a job at the Federal Center for Democratic Studies. That's where I started my career. I was there as an administrative officer. 1996, when the center was scrapped by then head of state, state General Sania Bacha. Then we were now moved to the office of the Secretary of Government, where we were there for some time. It was a period of law. The time time was a little bit hard at that time. From there, we were able to transfer to various, these, all the staff of the Center for Democratic Studies. We were able to transfer to various ministries and agencies and departments. Incidentally, I moved to the Center for 
I moved to Federal Environmental Protection Agency as an environmental scientist. While I was there in the year 1999, when democracy came back to game, we were, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency was transformed into, into Federal Ministry of Environment. I was here, I've been since, 2000, since 1999 to 2015. But I rose to the position of a deputy director at the ministry before I've been appointed as director general of the Centre for Democratic Center, appointed as director general of the National Biosafety Management Agency as the first director general, where I was asked to establish the agency and I started the establishment of the agency, setting up guidelines and also coming up with various policies strategies to ensure we have a holistic and national biosafety system in Nigeria. Why I was there, before I joined the cell, I was already embarked on my, I already embarked on the master's program in environmental biology at the University of Abuja. In the year 2016, I was awarded PhD by King's Seminary. From then, I have always been participating in international seminars and projects. As the Charles Director General of the National Biosafety Management Agency, the challenge of establishing a new agency was very imminent. But I had to work with a lot of stakeholders, ministries, and agencies, and experts to give the best that I can to It was not easy. I had a protester. Develop guidelines and seminars being organized from time to time, and also work with the international community to develop a very strong national biosafety system in Nigeria. Currently, as a result of my work with the, the management sent by the national at the National Biosafety Management Agency, I was I've been very much visible in the affairs of our safety in Africa and also at the United Nations level. Currently, I'm the chairman of the African Union of Safety Forum, where we are trying to develop a strong safety system for the continent. Apart from that, we are also playing a major form, are playing a major, major role at the South West African region to develop a common safety regulation for the South region. I've been very much involved in it. At the United Nations, too, I was also once an expert of the, the United Nations on the area in developing a, a national, developing a global biosafety system where we have uh, to improve on the Kalahina Protocol, which is a major regulatory, international regulatory framework for, for, the, for the globe in biosafety issues. We have also tried as much as possible at the national level, we are working with my work with my staff to continuously improve on our safety systems where we have granted some permit for the most of But well, there has been a major challenge in the area of, area of granting permits. The, the issue of some environmentalists do not really want to genetically modify our business. But unfortunately, I'm saddled with responsibility to address the issue of our safety. We have motion to grant permit for some release of genetically modified organisms at the experimental level or commercial level. These have constantly generated a lot of controversies. We have to stand the tide of these controversies. In the face of time of these controversies, a lot of challenges, a lot of accusations and so on. But it's an interesting profession. Sir, um, before we go into all that politics of uh, the biosafety uh, policy in Nigeria, um, tell us about your personal life, your marriage, children, your relationship with uh, your state as a child of Delta. Your personal life, your marriage. Yes, I got married in the year 1992. And since the marriage, I had, I've had uh, four kids, four children in the marriage, incidentally. I lost two, first child in 2014, 
and I also lost another one in 2019. This is really a major setback for me and Nigeria. It's a very uninteresting period for us. We we'll have to move on with We uh, still have to give glory to God. We have another, another girl and another boy in the family. And incidentally, the girl will be getting married in the month of June 2019, 2020. We, in my personal life, I said I'm married with children. I'm married to a lady from a do state as Ms. Maculata. Me, second degree. She's also a civil servant like me. She's currently a deputy director. I cherish family life and I'm a very homeless person. Once I finish from the office, I come back home straight. I love my family. And uh, as a citizen, as uh, an indigenous of Delta State, I have been in the federal service for years. I've not really worked for Delta State, but I've been following up on the, on the politics and other social economic activities in the state. And I feel the state has what it takes to be able to ensure that Deltans have the best, best of lives. We have social amenities. So um, 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 let's look at your life as a civil servant. What has been the most trying time as a civil servant, not a director general? Yeah, as a civil servant, because I was a civil servant from 20. 1990 to 20, 1990 to 2018, yeah, I retired from the civil service. Currently, I'm a political appointee, so I'm a public servant. So I'm a, as a civil servant, my major challenge was in the year 2016 20, and 2017, where I started my career was was scrapped by the then government. Sani Abacha, General Sani Abacha, and the Center for Democratic Studies. For some months, almost a year, salaries were not paid. So we had to struggle to survive. Survival was not easy. Was not easy. My wife and I, we are, also, we are, we are, we are civil servants. We were all facing the same situation. People came to a point I had to sell my some personal events to survive. I always find it very difficult to really beg assistance, so it was difficult for me to really survive, so I had to struggle. My wife had to even go to petty trading so that we can, the family can also feed. But uh, it was a trying period, but we were back in it. And, uh, so your best good. of all as a civil servant? Your best of all? Best of all civil servant? Yes, as a civil servant. What yes. did you enjoy most? What I enjoy most is interacting with my colleagues to ensure that uh, teamwork in the civil service is very, very important. I enjoy teamwork, and I have enjoying the teamwork. And, uh, uh, one of the major things that uh, I enjoy in the civil service is international exposure. I've been able to, I can tell you I have traveled to many countries in the world. I have never paid for uh, those trips. They have always been funded because my expertise are needed in those areas. So uh, we have to sponsor my participation in those activities in the seminar presentations, paper presentations attendance to meetings and sometimes trainings to, to use my proficiency in the area of biodiversity. I actually started my career in the Federal Ministry of Environment as a, an officer in charge of biodiversity conservation. And that biodiversity conservation is in line with the UN Convention on Biological Diversity, which was adopted in the year 1992. That convention, that uh, treaty has three major objectives which I really enjoy. Uh, conservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of biological diversity, and equitable sharing of resources derived from the use of biological resources. So the, the treaty is basically to ensure na nature biological resources are protected, are utilized sustainably in a way that uh, the earth, the services provided by, by the living systems are uh, always in balance for the survival of mankind. Okay, um, now uh, let's go to um um, politics now. Um, one of the reasons why this interview is granted is to bring out the political, we call it political beast in every candidate we've decided to speak with on this mission. And um, talk to us about 
the national politics you are already involved in. Because for you to be a director general in an administration, definitely buttons, political buttons must have been pressed. How did you do it? Under the good luck Jonathan administration, you are there. Now again, Buhari's administration, you are still there. Two political parties. How did you manage to maneuver in between? My appointment as Director General of the National, National Biosafety Management Agency is not unconnected with the fact that uh, I was the head of the Biosafety Unit in the Federal Ministry of Environment. And uh, we have actually, with my colleagues, we have driven the process of coming up with a strong National Biosafety Framework. And uh, when the, the law was passed, when the bill was passed into law in 2015, the, the position of Director General was the only position to be appointed to set the frame of affairs and not to establish the agency. And that responsibility on my appointment fell on my shoulders. My appointment, I can say, is divine and I want to say I give glory to Almighty God because uh, it is very, very unusual. I was uh, actually appointed on the 28th of May 2019, 2015, sorry. That was the twilight of the, of the ending of uh, uh, President Jonathan's, uh, Jonathan's uh, tenure. He didn't know me. The ministry recommended me for a point. Three, three of us were recommended, and I was number one. And he, he approved based on preference, which fell on me. I, say, I can say that my appointment is divine. The day before transition to new government, and after the the appointment after the change of governments, government, there was that fear that those who were appointed in the twilight of uh, and, uh, Jonathan's uh, administration may be removed from office. But I was confident that I was already there to general and I must say I say thank you to Dr. Jonathan and also uh, President Buhari uh, for being being a nationalist. He never thought that well I was appointed by a new government again. Allowed me to be realizing the need for competence and also the need for people. To, I was I was never a politician. I was never a political a politician. I've been a civil servant all my days before I was appointed. And when I was appointed, even the second term, which ended in 2018, 2019, the president Wari uh, was also gracious enough to reappoint me for another second term. I'm also grateful to him. And I believe in one thing, uh, President Buhari has some principles which I think no matter what anybody says about him, he's a man who has Nigeria in his heart. And I think some of us should like to be tenets of his uh, uh, political ideas. And uh, right now, I'm sitting on the political seat as an political appointee. And uh, I think we should be looking forward. What do we do after the end of this? of our affairs as a director general. Do we have further contributions to the particular state? So I think who will be thinking along that line and I think if there can give me the opportunity to, to lead the state in any form. So uh, be before we go down to the politics of Delta, yeah. uh, tell us about tell us more about the politics you played in the APC government to become the DG, because um, uh, the fact still remains that everyone who has served the good luck Jonathan administration has been wiped out of the system. You are one of those who were not able to be wiped out, either by spiritual aggrandization or by physical arrangement of good politics, or uh, let me say, the catwalk in politics. You, 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 you did a good catwalk and you remained. So please, can you share that with us because a lot of people really want to know how you did it. You are one of those who were reappointed by President Buhari. Why and how? You see, one thing I want to say competence is very important, but at the same time, loyalty is number one consideration in appointment or retention of an officer in service. If you are competent and you are not loyal to the system, the system cannot be fought. I've been loyal to the system, been loyal to this government, and I still believe in this government. And uh, I had to do what I need to do because the success of the president is what we have been able to do as uh, agents of the government in our various ministries and agencies to ensure that uh, politically.
dividends of collect, the democracy is given to the people. As the chief executive of the National Bank City Management, I have the responsibility to create the neighborly, neighborly one administrative measures to ensure modern biotechnology and these products, which are and genetically modified, are delivered safely to enhance the economy and to us to boost the farmers' productivity and also to create raw materials for industry to try. My, I would say that uh, my major challenge, my major commitment in the area of I'm loyal to the system and also believe that I must put in my best. What makes you, what gives you the uh, impetus to be loyal after Nigerians have outra outragedly refused President Muhammad Buhari as president? I can tell you that 80% of Nigerians are not interested in the administration of President Muhammad Buhari and you, in particular, have been interested. You have I been a part and parcel of this. Why? Where your, your, your statistical analysis may not be right, uh, one man's meat is another man's policy. And I can tell you that a lot of people will say Buhari, President Buhari is the best president I've had. Even though whether it may not, whether it's the best or not, everybody's assessment is not going to say. But I still believe in President Buhari's uh, principles and goals. And, uh, and so on that note, I, I remain loyal to the system. My loyalty is to the government and the people of Nigeria. Since 2015, when Buhari became president of Nigeria, we have seen a lot of losses in jobs, employment has be become a very hard thing for government to do. Let me tell you one thing, the Bureau of Statistics may yeah. not have done a good job. The creation of the agency alone led to the employment of about 350 staff. Was that captured? Did they come to the agency to get that figure? Other agencies we have established. More than more, more than thirty or more agencies have been established in the, uh, the advent of the project. And apart from that, the government has created a neighboring environment for people to try to do businesses. So the, the idea of saying people have lost jobs, we must look at it critically. Jobs have been created as well, by some also have been lost. But I think under this administration, you can see there are even though there are some who may not be fully involved in engagement, but under the Empower program, they are being paid money every month. And there are also value chain systems in the agricultural sector that uh, now and let people any good way. Farmers are having a better deal. Like the, the agricultural sector, let me talk about that. In the area of rice production. Right now, the foreign rice production, foreign rice the import has been stopped. Uh, domestic production in the area of rice has become, it's a boom. We are getting to the level of exporting rice in this country, and the farmers are smiling to the hands. So, you must not have a job in the, in the, in the, in the public sector, but the private sector, the government has to treat the new environment, and it's an income. Like in Nigerian Customs Service, uh, no matter the challenges they are faced and some of the weaknesses they have, they have also helped to ensure that the border is properly uh, policed so that our uh, domestic uh, production and their raw materials are delivered without importing them into this country. Okay, with our level of um, uh, economic uh, breakdown and our level of uh, GDP so far since 2015 mm -hmm. that uh, the administration of President Muhammad Buhari uh, have come to being, can you rate Mr. President? Can you rate Mr. President? Rate the administration of President Buhari at this moment? Let me tell you, um, the president came into power with a lot of challenges that he has to face. And Nigeria as a country is not, it's not in isolation of the international community. The economy of the world globally affects every country. So for, me to, for you to tell me, rate your boss, I think Nigerians, because I'm, a, I'm also part and parcel of his government, and I'm also working very closely. So it let the public rate us because I'm also part of the president. I want you to rate Mr. President you are, as, you are as somebody me. who is a player yes. in the same field with him. You manage an agency. He managed the country. So far, so well have we been for since 2015. Rating the president amounts to me rating myself. I would say the president has done well compared to what has been happening in our country. In the area of corruption, fighting of corruption, I think this is the best time we have seen 
so many former governors and so many other top politicians being sent to jail. This is the first time we have been able to repatriate stolen money into this country. This is the first time we have been able to say no more importation of rights. This is the first time a lot of people have been employed into the, into the government, particularly into the government. And this is the first time we discovered that the private sector money is now being given to the private sector at very low interest rate. So if I'm to read this administration with what I have said, I will, I, you will know that this administration has actually done very, very well. And I believe there's room to improve and we will continue to do the best so that Nigeria will have a better future. I believe at the time we get to 2023, Nigerians will be able to say, okay, we have a comparison between before 2015 and 20, 2024, um, 2023 onwards. So I think uh, we will continue to, to give the best we can to the government and to the Nigerian people because we, the president's sources are dependent on the ministries and agencies. The president is not a minister, nor the ministry of the minister of petroleum, but uh, he cannot be everyone. But I think it's a collective effort. His achievement is a collective achievement, and his failure is a collective failure. I have a big question. And he, the question plays a lot of politics from its answer. And uh, it has to do with the president of Nigeria at the moment, President Buhari. Um, if the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is amended and provides room for President Muhammadu Buhari to return to government for a third term, if the Electoral bill is amended for President Buhari to return for the third time in Nigeria. Will you support his return? The president is an apostle of rule of law, and he believes for his sake the law should not be amended to, to drive the interests of those who want to push him into a term. I think the president is not interested in total. If the yeah, law said is amended, if the law is amended well, and he decides yeah. to continue yes. with the top 10 B, will you support his moves? For now, he has said he doesn't want to go for top 10. And I wouldn't want to subscribe to a situation where there will be another political tension in the land. This has, an attempt has been made in the past, and you, can tell, uh, you should be aware of what's actually happened. I don't think the president wants any uh, heating of the quality at this time. Okay, let's move back uh, gradually to the politics of Delta State, which is paramount at the moment. In every political dispensation in Nigeria, we see that the dust of political movement starts from the south-south zone of Nigeria. Why do you think that is correct? Why is it so? The, the dust of politics. Why the dust from South South? Is, uh, well, it may not necessarily be starting from South South, but I think the South South is very important to the country because it is the region that uh, produces the oil, the major uh, economy of the nation actually is derived from the South South. And uh, whoever becomes the governor, the governors in the South South and other leaders in the South South need to be people who should be sound, to be able to control the agitation that arises from the agitation that arise from the South South from time to time in the area of uh, resource control, in the area of uh, environmental pollution and resource sharing. So, uh, we, we, the dust, in fact, all just the dust. I think uh, this, uh, all these things have an emulated pattern. So, what do you think about Delta? Delta is in the hands of PDP since 1999 when democracy returned to Nigeria. Have you th do you think they fared well? See, what I want to say is that. Uh, the, the Delta State as a, as a state ought to be one of the richest states. And if you are rich and the, the resources are not equitably shared for the interests of the people, there's something fundamentally wrong. In Delta State, there is no doubt there are some challenges in the area of infrastructure decay, unemployment, insecurity banditry, and so on and so forth. I think uh, we can do better. We can do better in the other states. Are you saying that the Okoa government has failed in uh, providing employment and uh, restiveness control in Delta? Because we confirmed that the kidnapping in Delta 
has become times 20 of what he inherited in Well, there are some governance failure on the part of the current administration because uh, when we have it, when you, when you, when there's a government in place and the government cannot ensure the security of the people, people are being kidnapped, the prominent citizen, uh, citizens of the state cannot go home because of fear of kidnapping, fear, fear of armed robbery, and so forth. So I think that you, 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 the government cannot be said to be doing well. So what do you expect to be done? It should be, um, that political party should find its way so out? What I'm saying is that any government that cannot provide the needed security, economic survival of the people. The people are not sure of their daily bread, they're not sure of food on their table, they are not sure of good education for their children, they are not sure of good food, they are not sure of good medication. They are, the, the future is bleak. Such government has no business. It's no business being in place. It's no business being in place. It's governance, governance failure. Because with the resources we have in the other state, there should be programs you know, to ensure that we can start. We hear that uh, we hear that guns are like knives in Delta. How true is this? Well, I know that one of the major challenges. Let me just go to this particular area. A situation where the people's vote will not count because talks are being used to intimidate the people during the election. It's a terrible thing. We need a government that will ensure the security of the We say that we trust our government. We trust our government will provide for us. We trust our government will secure us. We trust our government will put food on our table. So the, the issue of uh, Delta State, I may not really want to go into, the, into that, but from my body language, we need a better government in Delta State. So if... Um the people gives you the opportunity to be a leader. Will you apply to their call? Mm. If the Delta State people yeah. come to you today, our son, you have done well in the center. We want you in the states to help us reform Delta. What will be your answer? In 2023, who will call me? Is the it people. everybody? The people. Who are the people? The people. You Remember, democracy is described the as of the people by, by the, the people, people and for the people. people. So if 20,000 people decide to say, Rufus, for governor, 2023, what will you do? What will be your I answer? I believe we need ideal leaders to move Delta State forward. The leaders that have piloted the affairs of the state right now, piloting the affairs of the state right now, have not fared well. The truth is that if I'm called to lead the other state, the question I will ask, I will have expected from me is that what will you do if you have opportunity to lead the other state? He asked me that question. Because, uh, I have what it takes, yes, to be the governor of the Alton State, there's no doubt about that. But I wouldn't want to get to power through this feeling of the blood of the people. Whoever is coming to say I should run for the Alton State must assure me that this will be done under a peaceful atmosphere where the people will be secured, where the people's vote will, be, will count, where the people will be able to make their choice without any opposition. But on your own as an individual, are you planning to go for any elective position come 2023? I have a political dream to participate in the political affairs of my state. Not just in the state, in my country. I know when that time comes. And you think 2023 is not the time? Because um, yes. uh, no, the saying, political philosophers... No, no, I'm not saying it's not the time. Okay. I'm not saying it's not the time. The time, the time is even now. I can tell you the time is now. What are the political permutations? Who do I want to really work with? 
there's something that baffles me in a situation where the youth do not see themselves as leaders. They see themselves as people to be used as thugs. They see themselves as people to be used to start ballot buses, to put the wrong guns. I think we need to reorientate our views. They can be leaders. They can be leaders. They must see themselves as leaders. Because they are in the majority. They are in the majority. Yes, we work with them. Uh, sir, um, you are from the robot land where we have recorded so much troubles in the issues of politics back home. We have seen the Omagege camp, we have seen the Otega camp, we have seen uh, the uh, Great Uburu camp. For now, the PDP is silent on the issues of who to use or who to field in to attack anybody from the APC. What do you think about these camps in the Robo land? Because right now it is clear that Delta State is the only state in Nigeria that have signed a pact in deal to rotate the governorship position. And at the moment, as I'm speaking with you, it is clear that the Robo Kingdom must, should produce the next governor of Delta State. And particularly from where you come from is where the case of the splitting is coming from. So what do you think about these camps, Omagege, Great Oboru, and the Otega camp? You see, it's unfortunate that uh, we are talking about camps. If I'm to join the political rules today, my camp is going to be in people's camp. In people's camp. Whoever has a camp should think beyond the camp. What do we do for the state? Well, these camps are bound to be the end because we are in a political system and who, whoever aligns, aligns, aligns with you will determine most times probably victory or not even victory at all. But I think these are great men we have in Delta State that we need not to form our camps. We can come together and say, look, let's, let's discuss who takes what, who goes for what. If there's enough space for everyone, everybody must not be governor. And another thing we must also take note that let nobody feel that he's a big elephant in Delta State. The new ones are yet to come. But you have been uh, described as the big ele the huge elephant hiding in the center. <laughs> they say Rufus Egbeba is the huge elephant hiding in the center. They didn't know how you played your politics to Maybe. become DG. You are still there, and now your name has surfaced as one of the nominated people to be governor of Delta State from what we are reading in the media. Maybe that name, Elephant, is associated to the, the chief tenso title given to me by the king of Jikwe, known as uh, the Dagba of Jikwe land, which means the elephant of Jikwe land. So if they call me by that name, where uh, it, the, they are right. And the but name of your village too. I'm also, the, yes, the name of my village, the symbol is uh, Erwin, it means Elephant. Elephant, the city of uh, Elephants. Elephant. So, if they say that, they may be right, but I think we must sit down as leaders of Delta State and really discuss. Everybody cannot be the governor, everybody cannot be in everything, but we must recognize the, the views of everyone so that uh, we sit down and make this arrangement so that if anybody is going for governorship, then I don't care they are senatorial positions or that. We must not make a do or die affair, but. Uh, I think these, the big shots we have mentioned, they should also know that some big shots are going to rise. New eagles are going to fly into the United States. Even though they are already there, they are going to perish. And they will all find their niches. Um, the Deputy Senate President is now the political leader, so to say, in Urobo Kingdom, because he has the highest political position. And uh, so, um, uh, he, they say he has rights to decide who becomes who and who becomes what. What do you think about that? Can one man determine the political destiny of a people? I really want to commend him for being able to have risen to the position of the Deputy President. It's a pride to the Delta State, to the South South as a whole, but uh, let no one hold uh, the key to power. Power belongs to God, and uh, the decision to really choose leadership will be left to the people. 
let the people choose their, le their leaders. And I don't think anybody should pose any other money. If you are to be governor, if you are to be a governorship candidate tomorrow uh, for the 2023 Delta State elections, uh, we are seeing a great battle between another son that has dared in 2019 against Senator uh, Okowa in the person of uh, Olorogu uh, Otega from your same village. Yes. That my battle own, is going to be a movie that the people will wait to watch. What do you think about that battle? Because we see it already as a battle. Uh, Otega is said to be hungry to be Delta State Governor all his life. And Okowa has done everything possible to deny that. Don't you think there will be a pact between the PDP and the Otega political dynasty to hit APC out of business in Delta? I want to tell you one thing. There's going to be surprises in 2023. I'll tell you this. People are yearning for new set of leaders. Leaders with bright ideas. Leaders that will not make promises that will not be fulfilled. Leaders that will come up with new promises that are feasible. The future of the people is what matters. The survival of the people is what matters. It is not white elephant projects that we are talking about. We are talking about leaders that will come and say, this is what, these are the challenges of the people. This is how we are going to address the people. Well, then, let me tell you one thing, the issue of corruption in this country which Delta State is also a victim of. The public sector must be restructured. A situation where a civil servant retires two years, he cannot get retirement benefits. That has to stop. I believe a policy whereby civil servants, before they retire, they should be paid the, um, the retirement title, entitlement three months before time should be a way of people working meritoriously, securing their jobs, and not necessarily wanting to amass primitive wealth in the name of corruption. And apart from that, when you are assure a civil servant entering the service, that in the next 10, 15 years, you're going to own your own house, such a person will remain protruding and try to be honest. When you are sure a civil servant that when, even when you retire, your entitlement is not paid you, you continue to earn your salary until you get your entitlement. Don't you think such a person will work hard and secure his, his job? Uh, let me not let the card out of the bag, but all I want to tell you, new leaders will emerge. Uh, we have discussed so much with you. This is our first time of having a political interview on this channel and we expect that whatever time we need your mouth organ to speak to Nigerians and to Delta people, you'll be available for us. Just one word, just give us something for the Delta people, like an advice, admiration, or whatsoever in any capacity. The youths, the women, the downtrodden, and even the people in the political class. Speak to Delta. My advice political class must understand that leadership is service. The youth must understand they can be leaders. They should not be tools to be used by politicians and be abandoned by the end of the nation. Women must understand that they need their husbands to be able to, be, to earn livings for them. They also need to earn a living. We must understand that insecurity must be brought and end and it is possible. On, on, on the whole, I will say, the new data is needed so that the people can prosper, feel secure, and also remain protected to the system. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that is what we can offer for this first series of interview on B Television Network. And we have been talking to the general public via the mouthpiece of our guest tonight, Dr. Rufus Ebeba, who is from Delta State, 
who has done everything positive to contribute to the development of Nigeria in the area of agriculture and, of course, in the management of biosafety activities across Africa. Thanks for listening. God bless you. Have a nice time and stay blessed. Thank you, business.